Today, I will show you how to debug a C-sharp program in Visual Studio. Debugging is an important skill for a developer because it helps examine the code so you can find issues or bugs easily. You can do it by reading your code line by line and trying to find mistakes in your code, but this can take a lot of time. A better way is to use a debugger. A debugger is a tool that comes built in with Visual Studio. It provides many ways to see what your code is doing during execution. It also helps you navigate the code step by step to see how your program behaves. So in Visual Studio, you can start the debugger in different ways. You can use the star debugging button in the debug toolbar here, or you can go into the menu and select debug, then start debugging. You can also use your keyboard and press F5. So now the program runs with the debugger attached. If you want to stop the debugger, you can use Shift plus F5 on your keyboard, or you can use the Stop Debugging button in the Debug toolbar, or you can also go into the menu and select Debug, then Stop Debugging. Now, let's say I want to examine the code in the main method here. I will need to pause the execution of the program. For that, I will use a breakpoint. If I want to set a breakpoint at the line 27, for instance, I can do it in three ways. First, I can click in this margin here, whereas there is this gray circle, and the gray circle turn red. This is a breakpoint. To delete the breakpoint, I can just click on it, and it's gone. I can also add a breakpoint by right-clicking at the same line, then select breakpoint, then insert breakpoint. I can do it also with the keyboard by pressing F9. Now, if I start the debugger, the application is paused at line 27. So the yellow arrow here is the execution pointer. It points to the statement where the debugger is paused. So this is just a normal breakpoint, but there are different types of breakpoints, so let's see them. If I right-click in this area here, there is this menu that's up here, which offer me to insert a conditional breakpoint, a trace point, a temporary breakpoint, and dependent breakpoint. Those are special type of breakpoint. So let's see them in details. And we are going to start with the conditional breakpoint. As the name imply a conditional breakpoint, allow you to set a breakpoint which is going to be hit based on a criteria. So I am in this write to CSV file method which accepts two parameters, a data variable, which is a, an I enumerable of subject, and a string, which is a keyword. And let's say now I want to put a breakpoint here at the line 104, only if the keyword is equals a certain value. So I'm going to right click here and say insert a conditional breakpoint. And in the drop down list here, I just leave conditional expression. And the text box here, basically I'm saying that I want the breakpoint to get hit when the keyword variable value equals when. So now I can close this and you can see the breakpoint has a different appearance. This is the appearance of a conditional breakpoint. So now I'm going to start the debugger. And now my breakpoint got hit. So if I want to check the value of the keyword variable, all I can do is just hover over it. I can see that the value is when. So that's how you can use a conditional breakpoint. So there's also another situation where we can use a conditional breakpoint is in case where you have a loop. I have this for each loop here. Let's say I want to check the behavior of the loop at the second iteration. So for that, I'm going to use a conditional breakpoint again. So I'm going to right click and insert conditional breakpoint. Notice you can also add a conditional breakpoint in different ways. I can just add a normal breakpoint and I can just right click on it and select conditions. So instead of 
selecting conditional expression, I'm going to add hit count. Adding a hit count means that the breakpoint will get hit after a certain number of hits. And for me, I want the breakpoint to get hit at the second iteration. So I'm going to add two in the text entry. I'm going to close this and you can see this is the appearance of a conditional breakpoint. And I'm going to start the program with the debugger attached. And the breakpoint got hit. So how am I sure that this is the second iteration? The loop loops over this topics variable. It has six items in it. And the second item equals Wu. That means that the topic variable to the left in this execution should equal Wu. And if I hover over it, you can see the topic variable equals Wu. A conditional breakpoint based on hit count is very useful in situation where you deal with loop. I'm going now to insert a second type of breakpoint, which is a trace point. A trace point is a special type of breakpoint which allows you to print out messages to the output window. Let's say I'm in this for each loop and I want to print um, the value of, a, of the topic variable each time I iterate in the loop. So I'm going to add a trace point here. And in order to use a variable, not just a string, I need to put it into braces. So this will print the value of the variable. Now, if I close this and I run program with the debugger attached, and I go check into my output window, I can see that content of the topic variable got print out here. But the breakpoint never got hit. A trace point only print out something to the output window, but without breaking the execution of your program. So now let's set another type of breakpoint, which is a temporary breakpoint. So as the name imply, a temporary breakpoint is just a temporary breakpoint. Again, in this for each loop, I'm going to add a temporary breakpoint and you can see the appearance is also different. And if I start the program, so once the breakpoint got hit, it got removed. Now I can continue the execution of the program. So basically that's what a temporary breakpoint is. Now let's talk about a dependent breakpoint. A dependent breakpoint is useful when you want the execution of the program to break if another breakpoint is hit first. For instance, I have this log method. So this method is called in multiple place. If I want examine actually the content of the message variable, for instance, the program will break many times. Let's say I want a breakpoint in the log method to break only if the log is called from this write to CSV file method. So for that, I'm going to first to add a breakpoint in the write to CSV file method. Next in the log method, I'm going to right click here and insert a dependent breakpoint. In the drop down list here, I can select the breakpoint I want to get hit first before mine. So because I only have one previous breakpoint, it's at line 95, I'm going to select it. So I'm going to close. So you can see this is the appearance of a dependent breakpoint. I'm going to start a debugger. The first breakpoint in the write to CSV method got hit. And next, the breakpoint in the log method got hit. But the log method breakpoint never got hit when the log method is called from somewhere else than write to CSV file method. So that's how a dependent breakpoint actually work. So let's say you know uh, a, a name of a method, but you don't know its location. You can add a breakpoint by going into the menu and select debug, then new breakpoint, then function breakpoint. Let's say I want to set a breakpoint in the log method. I can just type here log and I'm going to click on the OK button. Of course, in this case, my code base is small, so I know where the log method is located, but you can see there's no breakpoint here. But if I start the program with the debugger attached, 
you can see as soon as the execution will reach the log method, you will see the breakpoint now. And the execution of the program is paused at this line. That's how you can add a breakpoint to a method if you know its name. So if you want to see all the breakpoints in your application, you can go into the menu and select Debug, Windows, Breakpoints. And that will show you all the breakpoints in your program. So from that, you can delete them, you can export them and do all kinds of operations. So now let's see how you can navigate your code step by step. The first thing I need to go into debug mode. I will put a breakpoint in my method here because I want to see what's going on here. And I'm going to start the program with the debugger attached. Once the breakpoint is hit, so I'm in break mode, I can use steps command to execute the code line by line. And the first command I'm going to use is a step over. So the step over will advance the debugger to the next statement. So you can use it by clicking on the step over button in the debug toolbar, or you can use the menu and select debug, then step over, or you can use your keyboard and, and press F10. I'm going to use the step over. And if I click on it, I move to the next statement each time. At the current line here, I'm invoking a method. Using the step over, we'll skip this method. Now let's try another command, which is the step into command. First, I'm going to use the step over so I can reach the, this method here, which is invoked on the object CSV writer service. So I'm going to step over. And now I have this line, so I'm invoking a method. So if I want to see what's going on in this method right here, I will use another command, which is the step into. Step into, it is here, you can use on the debug toolbar. You can also use in the menu, debug, select, step into, or you can use your keyboard and press F11. So if I use a step into, this advances the debugger in the first statement of the method. What if I want to go back to the color of the right method? So for that, I will use the step out command. So the step out, you can use it in the debug toolbar here. I can also use the menu and select debug, then step out, or I can use shift plus F11 on my keyboard. So I'm going to use the step out. That's bring me back to the color method, which is the right to CSV file. So basically those are the three commands you will use in order to execute your code step by step. One tip here, if you want to change the execution flow of your program, let's say here you can see the execution pointer is at this line 104. If I want to go back at the beginning of the method here, I can just drag this execution pointer at the beginning. And then I can just use my step commands again. Now let's see how you can navigate to a specific location with run to click. So let's start a program with the debugger attached and I've already set a breakpoint here. Let's say I want to advance the debugger at this statement here at line 54. So I can hover, hover this line. You can see a button appear to the left of the statement. If I hover this button, the tooltip shows run execution to here. And if I click on it, this actually advances the execution of the program at the line 54. I can do it also by using the right click, even if the program is not in debug mode. I can do that by right clicking here and select run to cursor. You can also use your keyboard with the combination of Ctrl and F10. This actually starts the program with the debugger attached and then move the execution to this location. There's no breakpoint. This kind of work has the temporary breakpoint. Let me start again the process. I'm going to put the breakpoint here. Now let's say I'm at this line, 40, and I want to move again at line 
55, but I have a breakpoint here. Again, I hover over this statement here, save result. I also hold the shift button on my keyboard. This shows me another button here. And if I hover over this button, the tooltip says force run execution to here. And if I click on it, so this will move the execution of the program at this line. What is the difference between run execution to here and force execution to here? So if I have a breakpoint at line 40 here, and I have a breakpoint here, and I want the execution to move at line 54, for instance, here, which is say save result. If I use the run execution to here, first, the breakpoint in between will be hit. But if I want to force execution to here, any breakpoint in between won't get hit. So the debugger will skip those breakpoints in between. So that's the main difference between the run execution to here and force execution to here. Notice that the force execution to here, you can also do that when the program is not in debug mode. So here, for instance, I can right click on here and, and select force run to cursor. This breakpoint never get hit. So I went straight to this statement. So this is the force run to cursor. One of the main feature of the debugger is that it gives us the ability to inspect variable. So you can do it in different ways. First thing, I'm going to start a program with the debugger. When you are in debug mode, you get new item in your UI interface. So you get this debug toolbar command. You also got new windows that help you watch the variables in your program. So the first thing that will help visualize the content of the variable is the data tips. So let's say in this method, for instance, I can go on any variable here, which will show me the content. You also got new windows that can help you inspect your variable. You can see at the bottom, I have this autos window, locals window, and watch window. If you don't see them, you can go into the menu and select debug, then windows, and you will see hodos, locals, and watch here. So let's start with the hodos. So the hodos actually show you variables that uh, are used on the current line uh, where the execution pointer is, and it will show you the variable at this line and before this line. So those are the variables you can see in this window here. But there's also this locals window this shows you actually the variable in the current scope. So I mean the current scope um, of the debugging session right now here is write to CSV file method. So this will show me all the variables that are involved in this uh, method. So I can see the data here. I can see the keyword here. I can see data holder here. I also have a watch window in which you can track variable. I can add, like, for instance, the keyword variable here. I can just click on it, right click on it, and click Hot to watch. So another great window you can use is this immediate window. This allows you to type any expression in the current context and get result. I have a list of data. Let's say I want to print the count of that list. say I want to print out the content of the keyword variable. I can just type the keyword. And this will give me the content. That's how you can use the immediate window. Another window that can come really handy is the call stack window. Each time a method is invoked, an entry is added to a call stack. A call stack allows you to see the execution path of your code so you can see which function was invoked before Let's say, for instance, here I'm in the write to CSV file method. I can see it in the call stack here. And I can see before that I was in the save result method. And before the save result method, I can say that I was in the main method. So this can really help understand how the code of your program is executed across multiple methods. That's it for this video. If it was helpful to you, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.